because I love conspiracy theories. But the thing is, I just, I, I don't know what it was about reading. I mean, like, I'm, I know that at least Tom King didn't do the whole intro thing, but I just don't feel like reading his stories. Like, I, I haven't read his books. I know they usually pop up on DC Universe. I get, like, a message. Free comic. <laughs> Digital. Plus, Titans is coming back in three days. Oh, wait. Was it three days? I forget how long it's coming back. It's coming back, I think, the 6th, so two days. Um, today's the 4th, so it's coming back the 6th. But, the thing is, I just, I as free, if it's a free comic, I am not going to read it. I, I did read some... I read No Man's Land, but the thing is, that was entertaining. When I read, you know, Bendis' book, I just feel sick to my stomach. <laughs> to the point where I'm just like, I'll throw up reading this book. But I know a lot of people, you know, they want to see Bendis take over Batman which I think would be a bad, bad, bad mistake. Because it's like, what's the point of even hiring talent if you're going to be like, Bendis is doing Superman. Bendis is doing Young Justice. Bendis is doing Wonder Twins. We don't know why, but he just, he got turned on, so he wants to do Wonder Twins. (laughs) Why give this guy Batman? I know a lot of people are like, you know, you shouldn't mock Bendis, you know. And I know that... I know that a lot of people were, you know, DC hyped it up with, you know, with Superman and all of a sudden it says, Bendis is coming. Which, you know, you look at it and you're like, oh, shit. It's just... Yeah, it's just like <clears throat> I just I never like I just never understood why people were so hyped about Bendis. You know, writing for DC like Then he did like the whole, you know, Man of the Man of Steel series. And it's like it wasn't even that good. You know, the the other Man of Steel comic that they did, I think it was the guy who did I think X Men as well. I forget his name. Shit. He did a great job with it. And Bendis' version of Superman is so bad. (laughs) Like, Superman getting beat up. Him and Lois having marital problems. As Bendis likes doing dramatic stuff. But, you know, it's not the dramatic thing where people are like, I have to read the next issue, I have to know what happens next, are they going to be alright? People are like, oh, this is fucking irritating. Because Bendis broke up the whole Superman family dynamic. Lois being around Lex. And, like, she did things that are so out of character. Which I'm sure him and Tom King went to the same writing school. (laughs) Take established characters and just write them out of character. Of... Lois sending John to be with Jor-El because she couldn't handle his whole alien power thing, which is like, I just want to be like, bitch, you married Superman. <laughs> you you married Superman. You know everything about it. <laughs> it's just... It was so annoying. Like, the whole... Even Tom King writing Lois, like... Lois going to the Fortress of Solitude. 
Supergirl lets them in. Which is like totally out of character Supergirl because Lois or not, I don't think Supergirl would let them in the Fortress of Solitude, especially Catwoman. <laughs> because she'd be like, you don't know what Catwoman's going to steal. She might steal your kryptonite for Batman as a honeymoon gift. <laughs> Catwoman would be like, I saw what she did with Superman by beating the shit out of him. Do it again. <laughs> Here's Kryptonite. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> and Batman, of course, would be like, I'll fuck him up for bringing us stupid Wonder Twins in our league. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> I just... I'd love to see... I would love to write a comic where it's just like, Batman just beats the shit out of the Wonder Twins. Yeah. They come back from a battle with, you know, Doomsday. Batman gets angry with the Wonder Twins. Like, what were you doing out there? Um, what, what are you doing? You, you turned into smoke, and you turned into, like, I don't know what the hell you turned into, but you turned into it. You know, that's it. I'm, I'm going to fuck you both up on sight. <laughs> I'm going to just wipe the floor with you two. <laughs> it's just, I would love to see that version of Batman. Just as, like I, you know, my version I, idea of Batman is just like he's gonna fuck people up on sight. He, he's just he gets angry and he, he's like, "That's it, I'm taking the gloves off." <laughs> just <laughs> like that'd be my idea of Batman, where he's just, you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I'm thinking of. It's just it's crazy to write, you know, that way. But I I would love to see it, you know. <laughs> like, you know, I love you. I love you too. <laughs> like the idea of Superman, you know, Batman, you know, telling Superman, yeah, you don't need to be here on Earth. Go into space, you dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> you know. You know, and Superman tries to, you know, tell Batman, you you know, don't be angry. Be like me. And Batman goes, you know, you don't get it. You don't understand. You don't live in Gotham. Get the fuck out. <laughs> just, that'd be so much fun just to write that. <laughs> Do you have a favorite Bendis story? I, I'll admit, I enjoyed his early start of Spider-Man. Ultimate Spider-Man, I think... It was him and John Ramita Jr. I think they... No, wait, it wasn't John Ramita. It was Mark Mark Bagley, I think, did the Ultimate Spider-Man. I know, I thought it was Ramita because, you know, the artwork, but... Ramita Jr. did Spider-Man, which I thought Ramita Jr. did a great job. But, you know, I really liked the Ultimate Spider-Man. The, especially the video game, which I still have. I don't have a PlayStation 2, but I have the video game still. And it is a fun video game because you get to play... You get to play as Spider-Man. Then you get to play as Venom. The Venom part, the introduction of Venom is brilliant because you get into a bar fight with Wolverine as Venom. <laughs> which is really cool. And the video game design of it was just brilliant. It was like very comic booky, Like literally comic booky. Like the whole animation and everything is like a comic book in a video game. And it's very underrated. I know a lot of people talk about the new Spider-Man PlayStation 4. Um, which I didn't get, I didn't, I didn't play, I didn't play it because I am sort of out of the Spider-Man hype <laughs> train. <laughs> From 2002 to 2016, I kind of like, fuck this, I'm done. <laughs> I just sort of was like, I sort of like lost interest in Spider-Man. You know, I... It doesn't mean like I'll throw every Spider-Man comic I have away. It's just that I just totally lost interest in the character. Like, you know... I'm in Gotham City now, so. <laughs> but I I love the Ultimate Spider-Man 
comic. You know, I th- I think it was great. The video game. If you never played the video game, if you ever find a PlayStation Two and a you buy it, buy that game because it is really really good. And when you're done with it, play Arkham City. I play it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I mainly play the Catwoman side missions. It is really fun. It's just it's like the perfect video game ever made. You you play as Catwoman, you can walk through Arkham City slow or fast. You beat the shit out of Arkham inmates. Then you beat up Poison Ivy, which is brilliant. It is perfect. Absolutely perfect. So, <clears throat> I I just think Arkham City is just like one of the greatest video games ever made. Just for the Catwoman parts. So, um, the Arkham Knight one. I <clears throat> the Arkham Knight video game I just I I don't know what it was. I love the um the Batmobile parts. Like I think that's like what they basically made that video game for is like drive the bat co- uh, bat car and stuff, the Batmobile, the the Burton, the 66, the Tumbler. Um they had like different skins for it. It was just, it was just really annoying. Like, I enjoyed it, but at the same time, the Riddler thing is just. I was just like, "Fuck this game." <laughs> yeah, you know, it was just like, it was kind of annoying because <clears throat> throughout it, you just you drive in the race tracks, and you have to deal with Riddler's annoyance annoying personality and all that and it was just kind of dumb it was just like why and to be honest like the whole identity of Arkham Knight being spoiler alert Jason Todd but now in the comics it's you know Estrada Arkham the daughter of Jeremiah Arkham by the way, that's where they took the Jeremiah name. Jeremiah Arkham. It was just... It was kind of dumb. But, I mean, the... Peter J. Tomashis did a great job with it. You know, because it kind of goes back to the Arkham lore. And stuff. Which kind of made it cool. But Jason Todd one was kind of like, what? And it wasn't just like, what? Like, in a shocking, you know, reveal. But it was just like, oh, come on, what? Jason Todd... Damn it. <laughs> you know, it was just annoying. But. Like, I, the one part I liked was John Noble doing the voice of Scarecrow. I thought that was fun. Because I like John Noble. He's a great actor. He was in uh, Fringe. And he was just awesome as, you know, Scarecrow and stuff. Like,. I, I, I wish they I wish they would put him as you know Scarecrow in like the animated series and stuff like because he has a voice that you listen to his voice you're like this guy is sinister and evil <laughs> and you like the whole dialogue with him as Scarecrow is Incredibly brilliant. You know, and... The story itself, like... The the dialogue and stuff... With characters are great. But the story itself was just... Bad. Like... It, I know as much as people love Mark Hamill as Joker... He's really annoying. In that game. <laughs> like... I know a lot of people give it a 9 out of 10, 9.2 out of 10, 
an eight or 